Hi friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Uh, today I want to do a simple video response to Scott Bailey of Scott's Game Reviews, who did an outstanding top 10 PlayStation games video. I just saw it, you know, last night he posted it uh, before he went to bed, and I really enjoyed it. And I, I had to do one because I, I love the PlayStation One like him. You know, what's interesting is he has a very different selection of games than what I had, but that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do it. Now. Um, he might have been younger. He said he was in school when he had it, so I don't know if he meant junior high or high school, but I was 32 years old. Uh, the, the opening launch week of the PlayStation 1 and bought it. I had saved for nine months to get a very expensive Panasonic 3DO at the last minute. I saw these MTV PlayStation commercials, and I had to have it. So I went down and was perplexed. I didn't know what to get, but what sold me on the game, on the game system, the PS1, was Twisted Metal. The Panasonic 3DO didn't have this, and when I saw this and looked at the back of all these cars, you are what you drive, and it showed this first-person view, I said, man, this is where it's at. I, I gotta get the PlayStation. So that This is what sold me, and to this day I love PlayStation because of the Twisted Metal franchise, which I put a tremendous amount of time into. So I absolutely love this game. It's I've had so much fun with it over the years. Uh, we just played the living hell out of it initially. But I bought four games initially. I bought a PS1, a memory card, an extra controller so my wife and I and my friends could play with me. And I think I spent $729 for the four games, a memory card, the extra controller, and the PlayStation 1 itself. So The next game that I bought, uh, which I loved, um, it's one of my favorites to this day, is which you rarely ever hear anything about, is Agile Warrior F111X. Now this is kind of like an arcade game. It reminds you of being in an arcade where you're sitting in one of those you know arcade seats and a flight stick, and you're just flying through areas and bombing the living hell out of uh, oil rigs and towers and different locales and the jungles and the deserts and different uh, over rivers and all this stuff. And they had these giant power ups that would float up over everything you'd blow up, and you have to you know bank around and fly through them to get more weapons or power ups or whatever. It's very addictive. This also had a custom soundtrack, so you can go in and put in your own soundtrack. In fact, I would uh, put in my King Diamond CDs and, and fly around destroying everything to King Diamond screaming at the top of his lungs. But I had so much fun with this. A highly underrated gem. I don't know why no one ever talks about this F-111 Agile Warrior. What's funny is I watched Scott's review late last night. And I all of a sudden watch some other top ten. This is interesting. I went, you know, on my PS4 and just put in top ten PS1 games. And he's in Metal Jesus and a whole bunch of people. And what's funny is that many of the games of the top ten, seven or eight of them, are all like the same identical games. Like people are afraid to not mention this game or that or to think outside the box. So I found it interesting. And after watching Scott's thing, I said, God, it's my taste is so much different. Maybe it's because I was 32 years old when I bought this. So I wasn't into a lot of the Spyro and a lot of those kind of cutesy games, which I bought my daughter for her uh, PlayStation 1 back at the time. But she had her own TV in her own room and a PS1. And later I got her a PS2. So <clears throat> for me, uh, I, I love, you know, Agile Warrior, Twisted Metal, and I bought two other games. The, the third one was Road Rash, which initially I had in the tall box. My God, this is to this day one of my favorite video games. My wife has said so many times, why the hell doesn't EA make another Road Rash game? I, I honestly don't know. It really just, it's amazing that they haven't. Now, I saw some footage a few months back of a dev that was working on the next Road Rash, a modern one, and the graphics looked outstanding. They had some of the backgrounds weren't finished, but you could see the fluidity of the, the high-speed racing and the the weapons, and it was just, it was like the Road Rash 3D on steroids. It looked gorgeous. And then one of the, you know, higher up EA guys looked at the footage and said, this is boring, no one's going to play this. It's too simple. And so they gave it the axe, which is a huge mistake. So my wife and I still play this today and have an absolute blast playing Road Rash. I can't recommend this enough. Everyone, most people love this game as well. It's just so good. The fourth game I bought with my original PlayStation, and all of these are very special to me, probably because that damn console made such an impact on me over the, the Super NES and my C64, which I had, had both of at the time, is Return Fire. Now, this initially was a tall box, and I cut the owner's manual down and made my own jewel case. I donated this to Classic Game Room. Uh, CGR Undertow reviewed it. 
Uh, I saw they were going for upwards of $350 on eBay because you can only get this in the tall box. It's a rare game, and you can also get it for the Panasonic 3DL. And Mark actually has his little sticker on there. He sent it back to me. I asked him. I've donated you know, tons of things to Classic Game Room, and I said, would you mind if you sent this one game back? because I just I don't think I could afford to buy it again, and I really miss it. And I wanted Mark to review it, and he just said, dude, I, I can't even get to it. I'm buried in games. So he said, I'll just return the game to you, and you know, don't worry about it. So I'm thrilled to have this in my collection, even though it's missing the manual and everything. It's an epic game. It's kind of like a capture the flag game. Very addictive, an awesome split screen as well. Uh, kind of awkward tank controls, but once you get used to it, each map gets harder and harder with more locations where the flag can be hidden. You've got to allocate your little helicopters and tanks and personnel carriers and jeeps to, to find and capture the flag and get it back against all odds. It's very fun and very addictive. I love the licensed classical music in this, too. It goes so well with Wagner and everything, with the little helicopter scenes. Each uh, vehicle has its own musical theme and really cool little cutscenes when you win something. It's so cool. Or if you die, the skull laughs at you. It's so epic. Um, next, uh, I had uh, got some other games here. Um, let me see. I loved um, because I loved you know the Twisted Metal so much. Jet Moto. This is the greatest hits one, but Jet Moto, and I have all three of these. Uh, was such an outstanding game. I loved the Dick Dale surf music early on in the game. It was so cool. Uh, wonderful, colorful, vibrant tracks. I love the modern take on it. Now, I had Wipeout, and I enjoyed that one quite a bit, but I actually liked the Jet Moto series even better because I was into dirt bikes and jet skis and all that stuff at the time, and it just it just felt great the way you could move around on this bike jet ski deal and the magnetic poles and the wonderful you know levels in the Antarctic. and uh, I can't remember you know which the first one from the second one, but they had wonderful tracks. And some of them were like big fantasy tracks, and other ones were kind of closer to something you actually could imagine in real life. But a wonderful racing game. I can't rave enough about all three of them. The third one was made by a different company, but it was really colorful and really cool. The next game is Driver. I mean, I, many of you also love this game as well. This had so much impact. The first open world PlayStation game I'd ever played, long before I'd played, you know, a Grand Theft Auto game. I play Driver, and I also have Driver, you know, 1 and 2. I have all the Drivers for different systems. But, man, this one is so epic. The first one, to me, was just revolutionary, and I just played it over and over. I had a bad head-on collision in 2000, and I remember playing this and Driver 2 over and over and over, just those two games at my mother-in-law's for five months straight. I absolutely love the cutscenes in this. I love the missions. It's kind of like... The old there's a movie with Ryan O'Neill and Bruce Dern called it's, it was called The Driver, filmed in Los Angeles, and it's also very similar to Bullet and um, the Seven Ups with Roy Scheider, which also had Bill Hickman that drove the Charger and Bullet. Um, it's kind of a compilation of every great '70s you know getaway driver uh, type movie that you could imagine in a game, and they did an outstanding job. Many of you love it too. Uh, very difficult. You hit a phone pole or a narrow alley or a building and you were screwed. You had to really have a lot of finesse with the cars or you wouldn't last long in Driver. Now another game that, from Single Track that did Twisted Metal was this wonderful Critical Depth. I can't rave enough about this game. This to me is another overlooked gem. No one ever talks about this game or how cool it is. It's very much as the same production values and quality of Twisted Metal but your little personalized submarines underwater. It's so cool. And if you go down too deep, your hull gets crushed. So, And there's some difficult level designs later as you get into harder levels. There's these like hidden uh, connections of like a maze of tunnels that go underground and you have to go down to find special power-ups and what have you. And if you go too deep, you can crush your hull. Some of them are like below the, the depth that you could comfortably go, but if you went down quick and grabbed it and sh shot back up, you could keep from getting your hull crushed. But Really addictive gameplay. I love this. I love the music in this. Just the opening menus and the music and everything. And the characters in it were so cool. It's still a lot of fun today. I can't recommend Critical Depth Enough um, by GT Interactive. Just a wonderful game. So much like Twisted Metal. 
Another great game, which I have in the tall box of Destruction Derby 1, but my favorite was the second one, Destruction Derby 2. Just better graphics, better, you know, particle effects with the cars and the damage. Now, I didn't do the Destruction Derby part so much as I did uh, the, the racing, like the NASCAR-style racing on the tracks, and I would just do lap after lap, and I really was into it. I love the music in this. I love the, the vehicle damage modeling on the cars. was outstanding. And then the replays, everything was so epic. This is an unbelievable game. I, I played a lot of racing games on the PlayStation 1. Other games like Burning Road, Hardcore 4x4, uh, you know, some of the test drive games, I, I enjoyed as well. But this one was absolutely one of my favorites. I love this. And like I said, I even have the tall box of the first one, which is really cool. Um, another game uh, that I had for the... <clears throat> Now, Scott had, had showed that he had Rage Racer for the PlayStation 1, which I had as well. I bought the original Ridge Racer, then I had Rage Racer, and then eventually I bought the R4 Ridge Racer Type 4, which is an incredibly uh, in-depth, uh, not really a sim, it's still very arcade-ish, but you had a lot of customization you could do with the cars, the graphics look great, the cutscenes are even better, and it also comes with a second disc in the back, that you can play the original Ridge Racer uh, in its original form, or you can even play it in a 60 frames per second. You can choose, which is amazing. So this is an outstanding game. I, I, I want to get Rage Racer, and I definitely probably would have had that. Rage Racer might have beaten this one out. They're almost an equal. I, I can't have a hard time picking out which one I like the best, but uh, it, it really defies physics of driving. <laughs> it's kind of crazy that playing it now. I played a little bit this morning and just did terrible at it. I forgot completely how to do the, you know, the whole thing with the drifting, but it's still a very fun, very cool game, and very addictive. I put some, just, I come home and put seven, eight hours into this at night, I mean, with, without even thinking about it. And also, I had to go to, get up in the morning, go to work, and I'd have to go to bed. But my favorite of all of the PlayStation 1 games, and I'm saving the best for last, um, is Duke Nukem time to kill. Now a lot of people I'll mention this, oh yeah, it's okay, I like the Tomb Raider ones better. And I played Tomb Raider and liked them, but it didn't have the Duke Nukem attitude. Now I had Total Meltdown and I had Land of the Babes, which I donated to Classic Game Room. I need to get both of those back, in fact. But first I played this, Time to Kill. So to me, my introduction to Duke Nukem was not the Duke Nukem 3D everyone knows about, because I didn't wasn't into PC gaming back then, but rather this. So all the one-liners, the attitude of Duke, uh, the adult nature of the game, which it definitely has. Uh, he even finds Laura Croft's skanky outfit, and he goes, ooh, skanky outfit. Uh, he says as he opens up <laughs> a little closet in one of the early levels, and then he talks to Laura Croft on the phone, and she's having an orgasm into the telephone. It's really interesting. He goes, oh, Laura, is that you? You know, and uh, it, It's a great game. Um, I love the one-liners. I love the Duke Nukem attitude. I'm a huge fan. I love them all, all the Duke Nukems. I have the Manhattan Project. I have several of the Duke Nukem 3Ds. They even have the new uh, upgraded HD package one for the PS3, which I love. But something about this. I have played more of this on the PS1 than any other game. I've beaten on the hardest levels. I've found all the secrets. I've beaten all the challenge levels. I've done the split screen with my best friend Chris. We'd come over and spend the whole night. We'd stay up all night playing this. It's such a great game. Going back in time, going forward in time, the old West days, the old uh, medieval castle days. <clears throat> Very cool. Even the Roman Colosseum type days. Uh, there's jetpacks, RPGs, pipe bombs. Really very clever uh, maze-like platforming. And really cool levels, some of them with really hard-to-find secrets. You just scratch your head for hours. So I can't recommend this game. If you're collecting for the PlayStation 1, for the love of God, get this. Uh, the follow-up to it, um, Land of the Babes, is not quite as good. Uh, the, some of the later levels I do like quite a bit. Uh, it just this, this really was the best to me. I, it really is my favorite Duke Nukem game, even over Duke Nukem 3D, believe it or not, which I love very much. So those are my top... Um, ten games. Actually, I've got one more I'll mention, which that makes nine. I forgot this one. Now, I had the tall box of the original Need for Speed uh, game, which I don't have, and that's one of my holy grails. So even though I love it, I have a Need for Speed 2 in a jewel case. But of all of them, for the PS1, this one's my favorite. Uh, high Stakes would be a close second, 
But there's something about this with the cops, the menus, the wonderful techno music, great menu graphics. Uh, at the time, I thought the vehicle graphics were outstanding, and I loved the spike strips and the cops and the graphics. Everything was so cool in this game. Such a fun game. To this day, my favorite Need for Speed game of the older retro games. So those are my uh, top ten PlayStation 1 games. And I'm going to have four honorable mentions. I mentioned other ones, like I said. Um, I have, um, like I have Final Doom, but I'm missing the box for it, so I didn't want to show that one, even though I love Final Doom. I have um, uh, Alien Trilogy, but I'm missing the box for that, so I want to find another one with the box in the original manual. Um, <clears throat> I have, um, uh, I had Alien 3, which I loved uh, quite a bit. It's a fantastic film, uh, a game. I think there's one called Alien Resurrection, too, I think. I had all of the Alien games for the PS1. Some of them I even recorded the footage via a uh, VCR because I get stuck on some levels and couldn't figure out how I was dying so, so easily. So I'd record my footage via the composite cables going into the VCR and from the VCR to the TV, and I had so much fun replaying and watching it and studying my gameplay long before there were PVRs and that kind of thing. But <clears throat> um, So I mean, there's many games I could mention on and on. I have loaded or reloaded. I mean, they're wonderful games, but... These four games here I'm going to mention are, are my absolute favorites. Um, here they are here. We've got the, the game Gex. Now this is one of the few kind of like Kitty Mario Brothers kind of little platformers that I do like. Uh, I love the attitude of Gex, the colorful, vibrant graphics, uh, the great music and level design. I just love the attitude of the little guy himself. It's such a great game. Uh, the, to, to, to this day, it's one of my favorites. It almost broke into my top ten, but not quite. Now, I have the Soviet Strike, too, but Nuclear Strike was my favorite. I loved this and put a tremendous amount of time into Soviet Strike, and especially Nuclear Strike. I love the little top-down graphics, flying a little helicopter and bombing, living hell out of everything in sight. Kind of a fast-paced pace little top-down shooter, which I really enjoy. It's, it's so cool. Um... Think what other games that I have, and then I also had as an honorable mention um, the wonderful Gran Turismo 2. I can't rave enough about this game. An outstanding game, uh, wonderful uh, graphics, the sim-like racing at the time. I had the first one as well, which I want to get, but the second one was just more of everything, and just wonderful cars, great tracks. <clears throat> And a fantastic game. You could really dial the cars in. It's my first time playing a sim-based racing game, and it was very, very different. It was very addictive. I put a tremendous amount of time into this game. I, I can't rave enough about that as well. Um, seems like I had another one, too. Um, well, the Need for Speed High Stakes. I already mentioned one Need for Speed game, but that, that's another one that would easily break in there. The graphics were even better in some respects. Uh, than the, you know, the Hot Pursuit one, but I absolutely love High Stakes. Uh, great music in this one, great cars, wonderful. At the time, I thought the graph was right near the end of the original PlayStation cycle, but outstanding games, all of these. Those are my few honorable mentions there. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, Scott, for doing your own, you know, top ten videos. It was very inspiring. Uh, Scott puts so much work into his videos. He doesn't get enough credit for the production he puts into his game reviews and his own impressions. I really do appreciate the, the excellent quality and workmanship and, and care he puts into them. We like a lot of the same over-the-top, you know, very violent, visceral games like Manhunt and Doom, for sure. <clears throat> but uh, Scott does a great job of the reviews, and it's always an inspiration. So that's why I was kind of my impetus for doing this was to answer Scott. So <clears throat> thank you, Scott. Um, I had to prop myself up with a lot of, you know, hardcore painkillers to get through this deal. So I haven't slept in a couple of days. I look like shit, but I wanted to get this out there. I thought it was a great uh, video response because I love PlayStation. And I, I wanted to share my top ten favorite games of a console. It meant so much to me. So uh, leave it down in the comments below. What games were your favorites for the original PlayStation and put them down. I, I'd love to hear some of them. Put three of them, five, or all ten. If you want to have the time and put a lot of thought into it. Or even do a video response of your own to, for Scott and me. That'd be cool. So, thanks for watching. And enjoy your games, retro or otherwise.